Hi folks, it's Matt McMeme. Uh, coming at you without the sunglasses because I think my eye is sufficiently healed enough to the point where it's not, you know, grossly horrifying to look at. Uh, Chris, coming at you without a mustache. Uh, my mom uh, and my aunt came up and visited me today. Uh, it's really late night right now, but we went and had lunch together. Um, and my mom was like, Hey, so, uh, do you want me to, like, cut your hair? Because my mom kind of, uh, cuts my hair, I guess, because she likes to do it. And, you know, you don't have to pay for the fucking barbershop. So she's like, hey, do you want me to cut your hair? And I'm like, well, we don't really have a place to do that. And she's like, yeah, I guess. Um, and, you know, we eat lunch and stuff, and then we go out to the fucking parking lot of the, the Red Robins where we had lunch. And she's like, do you want me to just, like, shave your mustache? Because my mustache was, like, getting kind of long. Um, and it was kind of annoying because I talked about it in, like, a video from fucking December. But it's like, you know, mustache kind of gets in my mouth a little bit uh, when it gets too long. So I have to, like, constantly be brushing it aside and stuff. And it gets kind of annoying. So my mom was like do you want me to cut it? And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. So, you know, she has just, like, this little fucking electric cordless razor um, that she brought and that she, you know, usually cuts my hair with when she does it. Uh, and so, you know, she's just going, like, like kind of shaving that shit. Uh, and then, you know, she's doing it, and I hear, you know, like she goes, and I hear, uh-oh. <laughs> so... Her and my aunt, and we're standing in the fucking Red Robin's parking lot while she's shaving my fucking mustache. Uh, and she's like, ooh, I kind of messed that up. And I'm like, oh, yeah? And I'm like, and, you know, and she you know, kind of evened it out to the mess up. And I'm like, okay, well. So I check how I look on, like, my phone. And I've got, like, a fucking Hitler mustache, basically. Uh, you know, like... The, my mustache on, like, the sides is, you know, cut down as much as it would go. Uh, you know, it's a, kind of the stubbly thing that the rest of it is right now. But it was still intact, like, right under my nose. So it's a fucking Hitler mustache. And I'm like, well, this this is unacceptable, and this has to go. Uh, so I had her shave the rest off. It was not my intention to come at you um, <laughs> without a mustache. Because, you know, I did that look. It was a thing. It was a brief thing I had going. And, uh, you know, I've, I've grown past it now at this point. But, you know, circumstances. Hitler mustache. Probably not tenable. Especially to get on fucking Hitler's birthday. It is 420. Uh, the reason I'm so low energy right now is not because of weed. Uh... I do not have any weed, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, even on a day so holy for weed emissaries such as myself, uh, weed individuals such as myself, uh, I don't have any weed. And that's just kind of the sad reality of the situation. Uh, I'm low energy right now just because I'm tired. Uh, because I ate. Way too much food at Red Robins. Uh, I fucking gorged myself. I ate, um, you know, I ate like their basket of, of chicken tenders that they have, which also comes with french fries. Uh, and then I had like two of the refills of french fries that they give you. So I ate way too much fucking food. Uh, and then, you know, I've just kind of been lazing around my dorm for the rest of the day since it's a Friday and I did all my, my class shit already. So I'm just, uh, I'm just pretty tired right now. It's like 1 o'clock, 1.30 or something when I'm recording this. Uh, and yeah, I don't actually... <laughs>
I don't know what the point of this was. I just kind of hit record. But you know what? That's where the best. That's where the best material comes from. The spontaneity, the passion, the creativity. It all kind of comes forth at once, and just you know, hits you like a wave of bricks. You know, and that's basically what I kind of consider myself creatively. It's a giant wave of bricks. And I'm just hitting people, and I'm just smashing into people, uh, especially people that aren't paying attention to me. I go, hey, motherfucker, and I just kill them. I just smash their head open, their brains start leaking all over the ground, and I'm like, yeah, bitch, that's me. <laughs> because honestly, the power of, of self-promotion, you know, obviously, I leverage that to the full advantage uh, you know, that it's possible to gain from it. I like to, uh, basically just walk out on the street. Um, you know, I like to kind of position myself around homeless people so that people make the assumption that I'm homeless as well. And I just like to yell at people to go to youtube.com slash mattmcmeme. Even though that's not actually, uh, the address of my channel. But, I mean, you know, that's... It's kind of more just like a mimetic expression at this point rather than, uh, you know, a proper necessity for reaching my channel. You know, the idea then is that they would, you know, put youtube.com slash Matt McMeme into their search bar, you know, their fucking URL or whatever. Police, can you not? Can you just shut up? You fucking pigs. While I'm talking in my fucking video, you goddamn bastards. <sighs> what was I saying? I oh, yeah, put the youtube.com slash meme into their URL. Um, and then when they, you know, uh, YouTube explains to them, well, this actually is not a URL that exists. And I would know because I've, I've done that before. Um,. They would then hopefully get curious and, and just type Matt McMeme into the YouTube search bar, which would in fact bring up my channel um, as the first result, unless that has changed recently. Uh, and I, I enjoy doing that. I've gotten quite a few of my subscribers that way. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to kind of gain more from doing that. This is dumb. This is fucking... I'm just tired. You know, I've been thinking lately that uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is really cool. Uh, you know, little known series, you may or may not have heard of it. Uh, you know, you may or may not know that I'm a fan. Um, but I'm thinking about why it's so cool. Because obviously, you know, JoJo being now a really popular thing, um, you know, it's mostly just kind of... And it being a popular thing and also being goofy and ridiculous, a lot of what people know about it who haven't actually, you know, watched and read all of it is, you know, meme stuff, to be continued memes, fucking posing or uh, Joseph's English or whatever... <laughs> You know, this kind of dumb, kind of, you know, Kono Dioda memes. It's kind of dumb, shitty stuff that, you know, is too mass replicated and uncreative and not good. Um, but I think the actual appeal of JoJo is really simple, though. Um, and it's just that it's, it's really creative. Um, the entire point of it in my opinion, especially as it progresses, is, um, you know, to see the unrestrained creativity of, um, you know, a master creator, uh, an amazing artist and storyteller and just overall uh, a visionary person, uh, to be able to see what they're able to do, you know, within the context of a shonen battle manga, um, kind of the creative ways that they can push that. Uh, and like I said, especially 
um, as the series progresses, it gets more and more creative and more and more bizarre. Um, you know, part four onwards, you're pretty much dealing with something, you know, that that cannot possibly be replicated or recreated in terms of the, you know, thought and creativity. And it is, it's creativity almost to the uh, to the detriment of other things. It's kind of like just this big rush, um, you know, whirlwind of ideas and concepts and stuff that uh, Araki, the uh, manga of Jojo, um, you know, the kind of stuff that he comes up with, uh, he oftentimes just, you know, straight up forgets some of the other rules he's laid out about the world or uh, you know, powers that he's given his character. Of course, famous examples in Part 5, uh, Giorno, who is the, the main character of Part 5, is introduced as having, you know, a bunch of crazy overpowered abilities that he, Araki, either forgets that he has or, um, because he thinks they're too overpowered, simply just never has Giorno use them again, uh, with no explanation given, of course. And that kind of stuff is not uncommon. There's lots of kind of weird plot holes or oversights in the, the world of JoJo, uh, which, you know, not to say that, like, oh, you know, whatever, it's not a super serious thing, so who cares about that? Because those can be distracting, in my opinion. Um, I think ultimately it's kind of part of the charm of JoJo, but I, I definitely wouldn't dismiss criticisms of those kinds of things. But in my opinion, the, you know, like I said, the, the unrestrained creativity uh, of JoJo even to the detriment of a lot of the other parts of the story, is what gives it that appeal uh, and is what makes it so engaging and special um, and influential as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else in particular I wanted to talk about. It's just a, it's just a sleepy vlog. Sleepy vlog for you to watch if you yourself are maybe getting ready for bed on this nice Friday, well I guess technically it's Saturday morning, but you know, fuck that, that's dumb to say. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching folks at home, and uh, I'll see you in my next video.